morning and welcome to our online service on this the third Sunday after Trinity. I hope you're well and I hope you've been enjoying the glorious weather God has blessed us with this past week. Whatever you do, please remember always to observe all safe distancing guidelines even as we step out of our homes after all these months of lockdown and to enjoy this glorious weather. Please remember to be careful and keep safe. It's a communion service we have for you again this week and we have this usual combination of songs, prayers, readings, uh, communion and uh, a sermon as well. So just the usual fare for Sunday. We start our service with Sophie and she'll be singing before the, go before the throne of God above. Over to you, Sophie. Thank you, Sophie, for singing so well as usual. And thank you for all that you do to enhance our worship every Sunday. We are most indebted to you. Thank you very much. Now we will pause and lift up our hearts in prayer to God uh, so that we can welcome him amongst us as we worship him in body, mind and spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we glorify you, and we honor your name. You are the King Eternal, the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is forevermore. As we begin our service, we remember, Lord God, that you alone have no beginning, and that you have no end. From age to age, you are. You are the one true God who was, who is, and is forevermore. We ask, Lord God, that you send your Holy Spirit this morning to be with us. Accept our worship, O Lord God. Accept our offering of praise. Be enthroned, O Lord God, in our praise this morning. And let your name be glorified. In all that we do this morning in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen we'll now have uh, two readings 
The first reading is from the book, The Letter to the Romans, Paul's Letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 to the end. Paul's Letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 12 to the end. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one to whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to, regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to the end. Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to the end. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is my disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to your holy name, O Christ. Robert will now preach to us, and his sermons will be based on the two readings I've just read. Over to you, Robert. In last week's sermon, um, Kula told us about Jesus sending out his disciples and that while he's sending them out into a dangerous world, a world full of problems, they must not worry, they must not be fearful because he will be there for them. He encourages them to be courageous, to stand up against institutional racism against totalitarian states, against injustice, structural injustice, wherever it is. Today's passage continues this message of optimism and can-do. It refers to the rewards and the good things that come from proclaiming the gospel. Most importantly, Jesus tells us that wherever the gospel is proclaimed, Wherever someone goes out to tell the good news, he will be there with that person and with the person who receives the gospel. He says, 
If you welcome my disciples, you welcome me, me, Jesus Christ. This is exactly the same message that we read in Luke 10, 16. Again, it says, if you welcome them, you welcome me. Jesus is there in this sharing of the gospel, in the midst of this conversation. But there is more. The good news continues. There is reward for those who receive the disciples of Christ. And this reward is very special. If you receive a prophet as a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous person, you will receive a righteous person's reward. Welcome them as they are and what they are, and you will be treated just like you were someone like them. You are treated like a prophet. You are treated like a righteous person. Now, this kind of parallel justice thinking seems familiar. It reminds us of Exodus 21, verse 24, that famous, an eye for an eye. The simple concepts introduced to an early civilization, which changed from a culture of revenge, of destruction, of hatred, changed it into something that is proportional, that is measured. It sounds brutal to our ears and when we read it today, but it was transformational for the civilization at the time. Now Jesus takes that proportionality and the sense of justice to a completely new level. He takes it into a future that even today we haven't reached. He is saying that it is how you receive people that you will be rewarded. There is more reward to you than you deserve. It's not what you do, it's who you receive into your midst that will transform you through the reward that you receive. And he goes on to say that even if you decide to be a very bad host and give a very spartan and stingy welcome, just giving a glass of water to whoever comes to you proclaiming the gospel, still you will be richly rewarded. So this is proportionality taken to an extreme which is, I think, nothing else than grace. And then, at the end of this passage, Jesus refers to his disciples as little ones. Now, we all know that these are grown-up men, and they would have probably been surprised to be called little ones. But it reminds us of another passage, the famous passage in Mark 10, verses 13 to 16, where the disciples shield Jesus from the children. If the children want to come and be next to Jesus, with Jesus. And, and they're trying to turn them away, but Jesus says, no, let the children come to me. It is these little ones to whom the kingdom of God belongs. He puts them in front of the disciples to learn from the children the kind of faith people have to have to go straight into the loving arms of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that kingdom of God. And so what we have in this passage today is a wonderful message, a wonderful message that says Jesus promises to be with the messenger and the recipient of the gospel whenever, wherever it is proclaimed. There the Christ himself will be there and we welcome none less than our Saviour. Secondly, he says we do not have to do more than to welcome this messenger, this gospel bringer, in order to receive a reward which is rich beyond any kind of justice and proportion that humanity knows. A reward which is simply based on grace. And finally, this is not complicated. This is not some theory. This is not complex. What Jesus tells us is that 
what we need to do is have the faith of little ones, of children, and we will be received into his kingdom. We will be with him and he with us. Now, in this very strange times that we experience at this point in time, um, lockdown, we, I think, have learned a number of things. We have learned that reality that we could not even have imagined a couple of months ago has become an everyday reality, something that we just almost take for granted. We've also learned that science does neither know everything nor can it protect us from all the dangers and problems that exist in this world. We have learned, very importantly, that we depend on each other. We even depend on perfect strangers. People regulating the flow in and out of a supermarket. People delivering food to our door. People emptying out our bins. People taking care of our children. People saving lives in hospitals. Perfect strangers doing good without being asked without asking questions. It is in these extraordinary times that good people stand up to do extraordinary things. And we have learned that in these times, communities that proclaim God and God's love, whether it's our Christian community or other faith groups, have been heard that the worshippers who sit in front of screens and listen and pray and sing, that they have multiplied because people have become conscious that they want to belong to a community that cares for others, that they want to belong to a community who believes in a better world, a world that is loved by God and has a purpose and a direction, that there is in the midst of this community God himself, who is with us and who celebrates that community with us. Jesus says that by welcoming the gospel, by simply letting it enter our houses, our lives, we have earned a rich reward. Lockdown may have taught us that to reap this rich reward, we don't have to wait for the coming of God's kingdom but we can receive the gospel in itself as the richest reward that is to us given. Amen. Thank you, Robert, for a lovely sermon. I'll now hand over to Mary Ambleton, who will be leading us in our intercessions this morning. Over to you, Mary. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. To you be praise and glory forever. In your goodness, you have revealed yourself to us and invited us to share in your glory. Blessed are you, God, forever. Father, we give you thanks for your creation for the beauty and wonder of our world. We ask your blessing on all who work in caring for the earth and all who labour to provide us with our daily needs. May your ch church lead others to respect the world and each other. O oh God, you created all people in your image. We thank you for the astonishing variety of races and cultures in this world. Enrich our lives by ever widening circles of friendship and show us your presence in those who differ most from us until our knowledge of your love is made perfect in our love for all your children through your son Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing on the mission of the church. We remember bishops, especially our bishops, 
Sarah and Rob and pray for all priests, especially our priests, Kunli and Howard. Bless all who teach the faith and help us to walk in the way of holiness. As Kay Langley May's time with us as parish administrator draws to a close, we give thanks for her 14 years of dedicated service and ask your blessing and guidance upon her for the future. May she know that your love and our best wishes go with her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that the incidence of COVID-19 in this country is decreasing and pray for those countries, among them Brazil and the United States, where it is increasing. We pray for all those in government around the world that they may know your wisdom and show right judgment in the decisions they take to combat the virus. May the people of this and other nations follow the guidance of experts and not put their health or that of others at risk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to give courage and strength to all who work in the emergency services. We pray for ambulance crews and paramedics, for air and sea rescue services, and for coast guards. We remember the police and fire crews. Bless, O oh Lord, all who work for the relief of poverty and suffering among the poor of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we remember all who have been in accidents this week. We pray for all who have been injured and those who are bereaved. We pray for all who have gone into hospital and all who are ill at home. We rejoice in new birth giving thanks for Roe Willoughby's granddaughter, Alice Hope, and the four babies recently born to members of our congregation. We ask your blessing on their families and pray that they may grow up knowing your grace and love in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renewing and restoring God, we remember in your presence our loved ones departed and ask that they may rejoice in your presence and in the fullness of life eternal. We commend them, the world and ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the sorry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come
Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father. Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to eat, sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death 
and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you to the choir for that lovely, lovely anthem. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just a couple of announcements, or one main announcement before the final blessing and dismissal. Um, the building works that have been going on in church are closing, coming to an end. I think the builders will be out at the end of next week. I was there um, on Friday uh, and just to look around, it's really looking good and they've assured me that they will be done by the end of next week. What that leaves us to do is to arrange for a deep clean of the whole church. As you can imagine, it's been, uh, it's been gathering dust, for the, the church has been gathering dust for how many, uh, this past few months. So we need to deep clean the church. Uh, once that's done, we can look at when uh, we will arrange it to open the church for prayers, just prayers only at this time. Uh, we'll walk out some slots during the week uh, to open the church up for prayer so people can just come in and sit down and pray, individual prayers that is. Uh, we won't be leading any worship during those sessions. So do please watch out for that. I will send out notices to everyone uh, so we know once that's the, the, door, the slots are to be, to, uh, the slots are, are. Uh, we'll be allowing everybody in who wants to come obviously will be safe distancing and uh, looking at the numbers of people we can uh, have in the church at any one time for individual prayer. So do keep, um, do, uh, do watch out for those um, notices. As always, it'll be good to see you uh, for the catch up um, later on to this morning at 11.30. Uh, you should have received um, a Zoom link. Uh, we send that out every week. So do please uh, Leah, join us on Zoom after the service, 11.30, and we'll just catch up and just talk, find out how everybody is. And it's always good to see faces after all this time uh, in uh, separate, in all our individual homes. Uh, so that's Zoom catch up at 11.30 today on Sunday. And we also have morning and evening prayer on Wednesday. Again, we'll send out a Zoom link for that. It goes to everybody and everybody can join in. Morning and evening prayer, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. Now for the final blessing. Uh, before I could just say thank you to everyone who's uh, taking part in this, who's contributed in the, to this service. Thank you to Sophie. Thank you to Rob for preaching. Mary Ambleton for our lovely prayers. Thank you to Alan, Jeannie and Anna West who for their song. I went down to the river that played, to the river to pray that played during the, before the communion. Thank you to the choir. Um, have I missed anyone else? I think that's everyone. Uh, so thank you and thank you as always to the tech team for putting the service together. Uh, it takes a team effort to be able to produce these services. 
online. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that it's a team effort and I'm thankful. And I thought we're all grateful to everyone who's contributed in one way or the other towards helping us bring these services to you all. Thank you all very much. And now for the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful, 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 wonderful Sunday. Bye bye. As I went down in the river to pray, studying.